Thank you, everyone. And thank you for joining us for our final Olympian press conference of the event. Uh, joined by two of our final first place finishers, we have Caleb Dressel, who won the men's 50 free this evening, and Simone Manuel, who won the women's 50 free this, morning, this evening, um, and joining our Olympic team heading to Tokyo. So we'll get you hands raised. Perfect. We got Pat right there. Thank you, Simone. Congratulations. How did you get from where you were a few days ago to where you are today? Um, I think I said it earlier by the grace of God, but really just by the support system that I have. Um, I'm a hard worker. I take a lot of pride in what I do. And I just wanted to go out there and do my best. Um, I think your hard work eventually pays off. Um, you know, success in swimming is not linear. There are ups and downs. And um, I'm just, I'm really happy to be on the Olympic team and do my part to help Team USA be the best team that we possibly can be. Simone, congratulations. Could you take us through the race and in particular the ending? It looked like Abby literally launched herself into you, a, like a hug of some sort. And, you know, looking at it, you're you're relieved, you're laying your head back, you're uh, just, if you could tell, tell us anything you were feeling or thinking in that, in that uh, couple of seconds after you realized you'd won. Thanks. Yeah. When I touched the wall, um, <laughs> I literally was like, please God, please. And then I turned around to, I turned to my right and I just saw Abby shooting over the lane line. So I was like, okay, I at least got first or second. So I'm on the team. And then to turn around and, and see the first place um, was amazing. I had to sit back and I really had to just say, thank you, God, because like I said, I really wouldn't have made it here without the strength that he's given me to just continue on this path. Um, faith is something that is hard. Um, it's arduous and it's kind of one of those things where sometimes you don't know why you're going through it, but you know that there's a bigger purpose in the end. And um, it kind of was just a mix of a lot of emotions and what I've been through really in my entire swimming career. It's not just the last couple of weeks, but, you know, just from, you know, being a young black girl and not knowing if the sport of swimming was for me and continuing on this path um, is just a part of my faith walk. And so I, I, it was just a lot of emotions. I've had so much support from my family, you know, the team around me, but also, you know, Team USA, the number of people who have sent me positive messages and told me that they've been praying for me and they were wishing that I made the Olympic team is special. Um, and I don't take that lightly. Simone, piggybacking off of that, but last question. Uh, when you saw Abby launching herself at you and the excitement on her face, I mean, you guys have been competitors for a long time. Uh, what, what did that mean to you to see the, that excitement in her face for you? Yeah. I mean, Abby is a hard worker. Um, I think we have a friendly rivalry in some ways. She's a Cal bear. I'm a Stanford Cardinal. So that's one way to rival against each other. But I think that every time we step up on the blocks next to each other, we really push ourselves to, each other to be the best version of ourselves when we race. And so um, just to know the support that she had um, for me over the past couple of days, but um, you know, after the 50 free prelim, she was like, we're doing this. And so it's really nice when you have a competitor that's, you know, competing against you when you step up on the blocks, but really is your friend and just wants the best for you. Caleb, what uh, is it going to be like? I know family is important to you. Um, what will it be like in Tokyo, not because of the restrictions, not having your wife, your family there? And how will you kind of keep up and, and how will they give their support to you? Yeah, I mean, uh, to be honest, at these meets, I barely get to see them at all. Um, I get to see them in the stands. So I know I'm going to not have that luxury in Tokyo, but it's not something I'm dependent on. I'll be able to keep up with them other ways. Um, so I'll get to hang out with them tonight. This is really my one moment throughout the meet to kind of wrap everything up and finally get to see my family. Actually, they came to the lobby last night. I needed to see them. Uh, so I kind of broke routine a little bit, but I knew I had the morning off. I got to sleep in. So it's not something I'm dependent on. I certainly wish that they could be there, but I know they're going to be back home and you can feel that energy and I can text or FaceTime whenever I need to. Simone, I know it's been a short time since you you made the team, but 
Have you and Greg talked about how your training is going to be different the next couple of weeks to deal uh, with the overtraining syndrome? Um, I think it's just right now it's important to rest and enjoy this moment. Um, Greg is a serial planner, so he probably will have a plan for me by tomorrow morning. And it's a plan that I'm going to trust in and, and obviously, you know, bring my commentary into the situation. But I mean, I think it's just important to soak up this moment. Caleb, Anthony was on deck. Anthony Irvin was on deck tonight talking about the kind of the changing of the guard with uh, he and Lochte and Grievers and Adrian not making the team. Uh, they've been such a big part of USA Swimming for so long. Uh, what is that group, has that group meant to you and their, their leadership? I mean, it's been huge. I've, I've leaned on those guys. I think the, the first time I got my hand on the wall before Nathan was in 17, um, but that doesn't mean I stopped leaning on him. That doesn't mean I stopped looking up to him. I mean, every meet since 16, which was my first team with Nathan, especially I've leaned on the guy. Uh, if I'm being honest, I'm not ready for a team without Nathan. I told him that just what he brings to the team. I mean, all those guys, big guys, uh, literally all, all of them are pretty big guys, um, but what they bring their impact, their, what they present to the team is huge. Um, they have some, they left behind some really big shoes to fill. Um, but I'm, I'm not ready for it. I'm going to have to be. Um, and I think it doesn't fall just on my shoulders. I think everyone who's on the team, we're going to have to pick up the pace because what they left behind is huge, um, from all of them. So I was really, really rooting for Nathan, but the point of having this meet is to pick the two fastest guys. So, um, everything they've left behind has been huge monumental. So not ready to be on a team without them, but we got a great coaching staff and I'm sure we'll figure it out. Caleb, a lot has been made around Greg Troy and his hard workouts. And I mean, you tied your best time in the 50 free after eight days. So what went into this week and how much did Troy prepare you to be able to swim so well for an eight day meet? Yeah. The, these meets are really tough for me. You know, I, I've always been a double, double taper kind of guy. So it's, it's really tough getting everything into gear to get your hand on the wall first at these meets when there's some guys who can really show up at the, the first go around. I've, I've always struggled with that. Um, so I'm excited to swim again in a month. You know, there's, there's plenty that we can do to get better and move forward from this. But this was a really fun meet. You know, I think I got better each event. I, I feel fine right now. I feel totally good. I warmed down, you know, I'm ready to get back in the water with a plan, but exactly what Simone said, I'm, you got to enjoy the moment, which is, I think, something I struggle with. So I'll give myself tonight, and then I'll be ready to roll tomorrow, get back in a training plan, and get ready to move forward. Simone, uh, me again here. Uh, so much of the conversation has been over the last hour or so of you making the team. But now that you're on the team, I think there's quite a sense of your leadership and that you're necessary. People have been talking about that, that they need you. They need your voice. Kind of what Caleb was just saying about what might be missing with the men. Well, you're not missing now. You're going to be there. Could you talk a little bit about what that means to you and also what you can bring to the younger uh, swimmers, especially? I mean, it means a lot that, that people feel that way about me. Um, I obviously, it's a, you know, for someone to consider me a leader is uh, amazing, um, you know, compliment. Um, and so, you know, making the Olympic team, I just wanted, I just wanted to make the team. I wasn't worried about people being worried about me being a leader and wanting me to be there. I think at the end of the day, it was my goal to make the team whichever way I could, but to know that, you know, they're not worried just about my swimming success, but about, you know, my leadership outside of the pool is amazing. And so I'm going to do my best to, you know, encourage the rookies to go out there and know that you deserve to be here and you go out there and you race like you deserve to be here and, and just continue to encourage the team to be the very best that they can. So I don't know. I haven't actually thought that far, but uh, <laughs> I'm going to do my best to bring the best version of Simone to the team. I'd just like to ask both of you, um, obviously, uh, we'll have morning finals in Tokyo, and uh, we haven't seen that since Beijing. Um, kind of what goes into the different type of preparation that you bring, you know, to really go fast first thing in the morning? 
Well, I didn't go to the Mission Viejo meet, so this really will be, you know, kind of my first go around with the morning prelims. But at the end of the day, you just have to swim fast and race. I don't think, I, I mean, I, was, I don't want to speak for Caleb, but as competitors, we love to race and we love to go fast, whether we're in season and not rested and whether we're rested it's just like that fire that we have in us to compete and so if prelims in the morning and the medal is on the line we're gonna have people fight to get their hand on the wall even in the morning so i don't think there's a lot of preparation that comes into that besides just mentally being ready to go yeah, I mean, that completely agree. The pool is going to be the same length in the morning and at night, so I don't think too much has to change. You might adjust some things here or there, a couple more sprint sets in the morning. Other than that, I mean, you're if you're not fired up to get ready to swim at the Olympics, something's wrong with you, so it doesn't matter if it's morning or night. For both of you, you're both on your over here on your second team, and I know a lot of people have said that their favorite part of the Olympics is training camp, so for the next four to five weeks, just what specifically are you looking forward to and um, just – how excited are you that you get to be a part of this coming up? Um, I think just, you know, getting better. Um, you know, trials is stressful and grueling. And I think once you get to the Olympics, you really have nothing to lose. So just finding those tweaks and areas in your um, races that you can get better in. But really just coming together as a team, you know, just standing back there and being raised up as a team. We already could feel the camaraderie. And so it's really special to form those bonds with, you know, people that were your competitors that are now your teammates. And um, that's really what drives us to swim our very best is because we're swimming for each other and we're swimming for Team USA. Yeah, I mean, I, I've always said that's been my most favorite part about every every national team trip I've been on is the training camp. And it's just, just messing around, making memories, a good laugh here or there. Everyone's on taper, so everyone's feeling good about themselves. So it, it really is. I, I mean, I, I don't even want to tell you guys stories, but it's just, it's such a good time. I mean, all of it, even when you get to the venue itself, like, like someone said, training camp is when you become team USA. And I'm really looking forward to that. It doesn't happen overnight. I'm going to, the team's so young. I'm gonna have to learn everyone's name. I'm so bad with names. So I'm kind of nervous about that. Um, but I'm excited for training camp. And then the nerves are done. The nervous part's done. This was the hard part. I mean, Simone nailed it. This, this meat is grueling. There's parts of this meat that really, really suck. Um, but it's parts of this meet that are really, really fun if you get your hand on the wall first or second. Um, so looking forward to training camp, just making some some memories. Caleb, what does it mean to you and your training group that you guys swept the freestyle events? I mean, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> Whoa, I forgot someone talked about that. I, I didn't even think about that. Um, yeah, I guess I haven't had time to think about it. So I'll go, I'll text Bobby and Kieran, um, let them know. I think we did a... The boys did all right there. Um, so it's it's funny. We got a good group going, and I'm sure you guys have talked to them. They're both class act guys. So I'm excited to be on a team with them. I look up to both those guys. I've said it before. Uh, Bobby was even talking a little heat and warm-up. He's saying he wanted to race me. I was warming up for the session. Bobby said he wanted to race me at 25. I didn't want to embarrass him, so I kind of let that one go. But both those guys are, are awesome. I'm looking forward to you know being USA teammates with them.